I guess touching on education, um, you know, what separates your schools to be above and beyond government mm. schools, for example? Well, what are sort of the things mm. that people would be looking to your school to go to and not mm. a government school? Well, uh, on year on year, the national exam is uh, the that's where the uh, point where they used to determine which school is good or which school is bad. And so every single year we outperform the national average. And uh, among the private uh, sector also we uh, outperform them. So basically uh, you can say that we are the top school in Cambodia in terms of uh, general study. So with that high national exam, we are known to be the top one. And uh, students who study here, their Khmer are perfect, their English are excellent. We are not bilingual school, we are totally separate school. Khmer school with national standard, with extracurricular activity that are based on American version that I usually call the first Cambodian American school in Cambodia, where we use the national curriculum, yet added on the Western extracurricular activity that no other school have it, such as uh, sport, library, clubs, and community works. And uh, we added on liter financial literacy, we added on uh, uh, tools that are necessary for, necessary for technology understanding. So all those things uh, are, are what it's make the, the school different and stand out. And not only that, we have a, a, a motto that say good quality, uh, good service, and also uh, good discipline. Uh, those three maintain our quality overall, that uh, parents and students are very happy that once they come here, once they come here, the children change, change drastically personality uh, from bad behavior to very understanding and good student. So that's what changed. And also we have a system here we employ, we call CSO, uh, one culture, one reputation, one system, which maintains throughout 20 campuses, the same practices so that uh, we stand at one standard. And that standard maintains top level in Cambodia. Okay, yeah. so just, just um, I guess for investors to understand the business model, mm -hmm. the, the school fees are between 1,200 to 2,500, is that around the price in terms of which target market are you, are you, are you segmenting? Because obviously you've got very high schools, like mm -hmm. 20 grand plus, mm -hmm. middle schools around eight to 10, and then you're sort of that 1,200 to 2,500. Can you explain a bit about the business model? Uh, we, we are the school that stands somewhere in the middle that have no direct competitor. Okay. Uh, you look at private school in Cambodia, they stand a tuition fee average about five to 800. Okay. And then you have a, uh, higher tier that stand about 5,000 to 10, 20,000. But we stand somewhere about 1,500. Okay. Yeah. So uh, there's no competition, there's no direct competition. And it's so reasonable that low income, middle income, upper income, they all can afford to go. And it's quality good enough for even a high income family to join. So it's a, it's a, it's a different version. And also we are the only school that separate general study with the English. While you go to other schools, they are bilingual, which means that the English and the Khmer general study are together. But we have two separate schools. Uh, general study, Khmer curriculum, that is separate school. And you want to learn second language like ESL, Chinese a second language, Khmer a second language, Thai a second language, then you go to another school. So we have a symbiosis that a student can study both the second language and the general study and speak well in both languages. Okay, and this I guess back to the business model, what was the thinking behind separating that, that concept? Mm -hmm. Why would you go to that and not the traditional bilingual school? Well, so. Cambodian is become like any other uh, Southeast Asian country mm -hmm. where you either don't speak English at all, uh, having difficulty with second language, or you have a country where English uh, people who speak both English and, and, and the, the native language, for example, like Philippines mm -hmm. and uh, Malaysia, Singapore, they are more like uh, bilingual mixed together. So you don't find a distinctive native language so that people will just well with it, their own language. So Cambodians become like that. So the government are trying effortlessly to separate so that people would just learn Khmer and know Khmer, understand Khmer, and write and written Khmer. 
But right now, a majority of the students are not that. They are bilingual. So it's, uh, it's not good for the future. So we are the first school have been doing that from day one. And it's become the trend. And that's what the government see that that is very important. And then recently, the Prime Minister have uh, adopted that as the uh, model of study. Mm -hmm. And uh, is there any thoughts on bringing in trilingual, putting Chinese into the, the mix as well? Uh, we right now, for the language school, we have the Chinese, the Thais, the English, and coming up this uh, next term, the French and the Khmer for expat. So basically the language schools, and anyone can study any languages in addition to the general study. So rather than have a jumbo language in one program, where you study the gen general study and then you, you have the Chinese, the English, and the Thai all mixed up. So it's the very, very confusing, lost focus. So if you were to study just general study in one in morning or one afternoon, and then vice versa, you study the language separately. So that, that way you are very distinct uh, between the two, and you learn much better than, than rather mixed together. Okay, fantastic. And I guess, um, you know, looking forward, as we always, any investor, it's mm -hmm. all about looking into what the future is going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any sort of KPIs that you can share with us about, I guess, this year or even on the next few years that you'd like to achieve um, from either a stock price or a dividend or even just from a company performance point of view? Mm -hmm. Well, from our cash flow and our projection, we see year on year growing. And we have been doing this projection for the past 19 years, and it has never been wrong. So hopefully next year it will be the same. We plan to expand a few more campus as usual and expect the revenue to continue to increase. Every, every few years, there's a dip in revenue uh, and also is a dip in uh, gross profit and net profit because of the expansion. So the more you expand, the, uh, the more it grows, but at certain time there's a, a, a kinky, a, a, a gag where it will drop a little bit to make up the expansion. So we don't know if it's next year or this year. I think every two or three years there's a, a, there's a drop in uh, revenue because of expansion, not revenue, the profit. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I think by next year or, or, or this year, on, uh, on next year or the year after that, there will be a drop of uh, uh, profit. But uh, we will have uh, uh, growth as usual. We will have uh, expansion as usual. So hopefully we continue to expand uh, our campuses with the language school, with the general study school. And at the same time, we will look forward to diversify our, our school into university into TVET, into uh, professional program uh, such as uh, special need and so on, and especially medical school, if the government allows us to open one. Uh, right now it's a little bit tightened. They require you have a hospital before you can open medical school. But we, we work on that. Uh, we hope to expand uh, to meet the demand. Right now the demand is so, so high that no matter how many schools you open, you will not meet the demand. Uh, you are be below 90% what the de demand are in Cambodia. So it's sad that education are very uh, dry, not saturated in a way. It takes at least 40, 50 more years before it's uh, become too even. Uh, that's the, uh, the reason why. The reason being is that more people are looking forward to private education uh, they trust more and the student perform better and the parent are more confident in the student performing overall characteristic, attitude, behavior, personality. Uh, they see there's trends that uh, are much better than in pu public school. But uh, not all private schools are as expected and not all government schools are that bad. Uh, we have a lot of public schools that are also very uh, good that outperform private school also. But in all, in all in general, the perception is that they will go to private school if they can afford it.